Miss Tina, can you give me a little more sound? Well, good morning. How's everybody? I heard y'all had some church last Sunday. Huh? I was, uh, I took a little time for myself. I'm, I'm starting to get a little wiser as I get older. And take a look. <laughs> and uh, I decided to go get fed. I, I, I don't know if God had placed, placed it on my heart to go uh, visit the church that I attended when I was in Atlanta back in 93. I first got out of college, and it's, you know, you, you, it's, it's such a blessing, believe it or not, it is such a blessing to go somewhere where don't nobody know you, and you're not trying to do dirt. I just want to straighten that out real quick, that's, because I know a lot of us go to Atlanta to, anyway, um, but I was having to laugh at myself, and as many of you know, uh, Cherie supervises our streaming. And so I'm sitting in the back of the church, supposed to be worshiping. <laughs> I'm on my phone with CYM, watching y'all have a good time. So proud of Pastor Jay and the wonderful job he did. Amen. It was funny. I told him. I said, uh, "I said this Sunday you got to be the pastor. You got to you, you got to do the whole thing." And he did. He he must not have been paying attention to me, because all he heard was that he had to preach. And as we got closer to the weekend, I said, "Now you got. You know you got to do everything." So, Hold up. You're not gonna be here. I said, "I'm not even gonna be in the building." I said, "I need you." to pastor them for me from beginning to end. And I think he did a wonderful job. A wonderful job. I want to invite you guys to come out you know, this Wednesday for our potluck meal um, in celebration of my 48th trip around the sun. I'm grateful. So grateful for that. Um, and please don't 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 get funny. If you hadn't been coming out for Bible study like we always say, don't act funny, act like you can't come on Wednesday. Just come on. We're gonna talk about you, but come on. Look who showed up to eat. Can't praise the Lord, but you can eat, can't you? No. I'm teasing. Don't talk about them too loud. No, come on out. We're going to have a good time, uh, play some more Name That Tune, and so you can see how many of your, your fellow saints ain't really all that saved. That'll give you hope for yourself. You'll feel better about yourself. I want to remind you that our second time of the year to do First Fruits coming up on Easter Sunday, April the 21st. So we ask you to go ahead and be in prayer about what your first fruit offering will be over and above your tithes and your offerings. So begin to ask the Lord about that and also assign what you need to that offering. And last but not least, uh, Friends and Family Day will be this fifth Sunday. Listen, um, statistics say that the unchurch will not come without an invitation. But they're eager to come with one. So we're taking for granted a lot of the stuff that you've been praying for, for somebody that you love, could be solved if you just bring them to church. You've been hoping God would, you know, you've been sending God to all these places. You've been sending them over to Pookie them house and everybody else's house and bring them to his house. Because if you were like me, somebody brought me to his house and I met him. 
Amen. And something grabbed me. Somebody grabbed me and my life changed. So as simple as that. Because you got people who, are, they don't have their life together just like we, still getting ours together, but they love you. They love you. And if you were just to say, well, just come go with me. Because you know, y'all, it's hard. Because God had, God had to remind me of that when I went to church in Atlanta. As soon as I pulled up, he says, I need you to pay attention what it feels like to go to a church and nobody knows you. I need you to pay attention to the feelings. And being in the parking lot and hoping you ain't in somebody's space and hoping that people are glad to see you and they're going to greet you right. And I said, God, I take that for granted at CYM because these are my people and I'm here every Sunday. And matter of fact, I was sitting here counting a few minutes ago. We've had over 550 Sundays together. So I'm used to y'all. But what about the person that ain't never been? That takes courage to come in and not knowing if you done made the, if you got the right dress code on, if you don't. Crazy part is, am I sitting in somebody's seat? That part had me rattled last week. I'm like, man, I don't feel like sitting down here and having to deal with somebody because I'm in their seat. And so, guess what? To make sure that we never have that issue, ain't nobody got no seats. Let me say that again, because some of y'all act funky about your seats. Trust me, I've already heard. <laughs> Stuff get back to me how y'all act and somebody sit on your road that's unfamiliar. <laughs> if the seat that you like to sit in is available when you get here, sit down. <laughs> if it ain't available, still go somewhere. <laughs> All right? With a smile on your face, not a scowl on your face. Don't sit there and look them up and down like they should have known. Don't do that. Really, don't do that. Because we don't, we don't bust our tail from the greeters to the ushers, trying to love them all the way into the building, and they get here and you act like you're on a seat. Don't do that. Don't do that. As a matter of fact, be inviting. Sit on familiar face, say, come on, sit with me. See somebody sitting on the outskirts. See, we don't do that. Because I promise you, we, we got a good sound system. Y'all can hear me all over the building. You ought to be watching for people who are on the fringe. Really, you really should. And I didn't even realize God was doing that to me when I was growing up because I've always had an attraction for the people that everybody else leave out. I always have. If I see you being left out, I was going to come get you. If you were in a meeting with us and you were the only one not talking, I was going to make sure your voice was heard. It's just something in me. But I knew he's preparing me for this thing that I didn't want to do later called being a pastor. I need you to be watchful. Amen. You see somebody that looks like they need confidence, you don't need, them. You don't need to know their name to hug them. You don't need to know their situation to pray for them. Hello, somebody. You ain't got to stroll up and be nosy. What you crying for, baby? No, just Lord. He promised you he'd give you the words to say in the moment. Amen. Put the welcome mat out. Is that all right? Pretend it's you coming for the first time. It's called empathy. God heal us from our lack of empathy. All right. Let me quit being daddy. Been gone for a week and come back whipping folk. Look at you. Y'all act a little funny once you've been gone for a week. April up here twirling and carrying on like I've been gone for <laughs> I've been gone for one week now. So me and Jermaine gonna have a meeting. I said, you look good on camera, but what you let happen while I was <laughs> Come on, stand to your feet. Huh. Nudge somebody beside you and say, God's still good. <laughs> Just in case you were wondering. Just in case you were wondering. 
Just in case. <laughs> God's still good. That felt good to me. God is still good. No matter where I am. <laughs> I almost feel like we ought to we need to hover right there for a minute. Still good. Go ahead and look at all your complaints. Then cover them all with still good. Still good. It'll make you smile when your circumstances say you ought to be crying. Still good. Yeah. I don't know how many times God going to send me back to this little verse of Scripture, but as long as he's talking about it, we're going to keep going back to it. Yeah. I think this might bless you today. Genesis 32. As you all know, been with me for a while. Genesis clearly is my favorite book. Let's talk about my man Jacob. Verse 24 says, huh. And Jacob, stick your name in there. That ain't even my sermon, but that thing will preach right there one day. <laughs> and Wendell was left alone. Doggone it. Let me write. I need to write that note down. Go <laughs> preach that. And there wrestled a man with him until the breaking of the day. Verse 25, where we're going to get our message from. And when he saw that he prevailed not against him, he touched the hollow of his thigh. And the hollow of Jacob's thigh was out of joint as he wrestled with him. And he touched the hollow of his thigh. His joint was knocked out of place during this altercation. You may be seated. I want to talk to you this morning from this simple topic, <laughs> my limp. Mm. Mm. Mm -mm. My limp. Just the title, not the meaning. Y'all ahead of yourselves. <laughs> my limp. See why I am. Because, well, truth be told, you can't, you can't do this thing called pastoring. And, I, and, and Jay is learning this, and our ministers are even learning this, those of them who, who, who desire to, to pastor someday. And, and if they do, pray for them. Um, you can't do this if you don't love people. For real. You have to love people when you, even when you don't like them. Okay, because we move in and out of like. Like happens because of how you handled your moment. But I can still love you because I know the moment's gonna pass. But right now, I don't. and but because I love you, <laughs> I really want to give y'all everything I learn. As soon as I get something, I'm thinking about you. How can I package it to give it to CYM? And not only that, I because of this affection that I have for you. I, I, I want to give you every bit of wisdom that I've learned from applying what I've learned. So you don't get wisdom just because you learned something. It only converts to wisdom when you, thank y'all. We know a whole lot of stuff that we ain't even trying. To apply. We don't heard a whole bunch of messages, a whole bunch of solutions and answers where our lives could be so much better right now if we would just apply. But sometimes we'd rather just have the information so that I can sound like I fit in. Mm. Help us, Lord. But I want to give it to you. 
I, I, I want to tell you the kind of stuff, because this is what most pastors want. I do. I really want to tell you the kind of stuff that makes y'all want to jump up and run around the building. I want that, too. But I also have to, and I know I have to tell you the more sobering stuff. The stuff that makes you feel like I just snatched the rug out from under you. I need to give you that. I need to stand up here some Sundays and make you mad. Because you feel like the message is picking on you. Sometimes y'all feel like I done sat somewhere and wrote a sermon just for you. But those of y'all who say that, don't ever tell somebody you got low self-esteem ever again. If you think I done spent a whole week on you. <laughs> you feel like I done walked up into your life. You mad because I done touched on something you know you need to deal with. You know you need to be confronted in. And so instead of thanking God for loving you enough to come and correct you, you are mad at the messenger. And I know I got to let you be upset because I know anger is going to fade and the truth will remain. So I'll let you be mad because they won't last long, but that truth is going to still stick to your ribs. But here's the part I really don't like for Chris and Jay and all those who think they want to be pastors. Here's the part you're not going to like. Sometimes I got to stand in front of you and disappoint you as God makes me reveal to you my humanity, where I've missed it while pastoring. I've got to do that. Get this. He makes me do that just so that you might learn a principle. And I hope that you're not so caught up in the fact that I had to use myself as an example that you missed the truth. But I know he makes me do it because most of y'all are nosy, and so if I talk about me, you pay attention. Take note of that, Chris. Got to put yourself out there so they pay attention, just in hopes that you get it. And oftentimes I got to preach stuff to you that's both bitter and sweet at the same time. Today's message is one of those where it's bitter and sweet, but necessary. Somebody say necessary. necessary. It really is. See, I'm finding something uh, and a reoccurring theme in my life in this season of my life, in this time of my life. I, I keep finding that the Holy Spirit keeps taking me back to the life of Jacob. And if you're not careful, your crew messenger can mess you up because we know what Jacob is prominently known for. And like, God, you keep taking me back to Jacob. What you trying to say about me? And then the Holy Spirit had to jump in real quick and interrupt the conversation I'm having with my crew messenger to remind me that it ain't about that. He has to show me that every time he took me back to Jacob, he wasn't spending a whole bunch of time on the fact that Jacob was known to be a trickster or a supplanter. But what he wanted me to see about Jacob was his brokenness. And I get that because it makes sense with what he told me just a couple of weeks ago when he said, Wendell, he said, CYM has to become the place. Listen to this now. It has to be the place where the broken come to worship and learn their way back to wholeness. Yes, sir. I understand that a little bit better now, Bridget. Listen to that again. Where the broken come to worship and learn their way back to wholeness. See, the thing is, is that... I can't dismiss, neither can you dismiss that you, that you are part emotional and rational being. And your emotions get here long before your logic gets here. Y'all remember we talked about that. And what we have to understand, Kiana, is that we have to give them a place for their emotions. And so God, that's why God has been taking our worship and going. Because he's been trying to give you a place where you can pour out. Y'all better hear me. Because if, if you don't have a place of release for your emotions, then your emotions will interfere when you should be learning. So I've got to give my emotions their place in worship so that when the preaching comes, I'm ready to learn. 
Because I can't cry my way into healing. I got to learn my way into healing. But until I get these tears out. And so that's why God gives you worship. Because while I'm crying, nobody looking at me crazy because it just looks like worship. While I'm telling God what's going on with me, ain't nobody looking at me crazy. Because that's just my worship. My hallelujah don't look different from yours, but it's very different from yours. Because I'm crying out for what's going on with me. I got to get the stuff out so I can get something in. So listen, if you are sitting there through worship, you are allowing your emotion to show up when you ought to be listening. You're being emotional during the teaching when you should be learning because I got it all. I've got to give place to this pain. There has to be an expression of this hurt. I got to do it. You keep denying. I know you're trying to fool us and that you're blessed and highly favored. And you can be blessed and still hurt. It could be going great over here and crazy as hell over here. So my worship is the time I cry out. It's when I yell help. I'm trying to help you. Bros. I know we've been fed that misinformation. We got to be strong and silent. Huh? If you got a lead, you got more pressure on you than anything. What I've come to understand, either we worship or we die. Either we worship or our blood pressure goes crazy. Either we worship or cancer shows up. Either we worship or we have diabetes. Either Because we, we're going to find some way to deal with the pain. It's, I don't want to smoke it out. I don't want to drink it out. I don't want to sex it out. I don't want to eat it out. Maybe, maybe if I just holler it out. So if I look crazy over here in the front row sometime, just know he trying to get something out. He got to preach in a minute. Hold up. Y'all up. Y'all to be somewhere going, holler, pastor. Get it out. Because I don't need your emotions to interfere with this word. Sit down. So next Sunday, don't play with your worship. Oh, I, I hear you, Lord. Don't play with your life. Get it out. Get it out. If you run, you might free somebody else up to run. If you dance, you might free somebody else up to dance. It's just me trying to get some stuff out. So that when the preaching comes, I can hear. Mm. That should be the place. So while I was riding to church Sunday, my mind wasn't even on Jacob. But the Holy Spirit hit me with a Jacob question that seemed to ask. It sounded like it came completely out of left field. And I heard this question, and you know how we are. We can't do a whole bunch of stuff at one time, so I had to turn the radio off and turn the air down so I could hear. <laughs> he said, Wendell. He said, what does it mean that Jacob was touched in the hollow of his thigh? Put 25 up there. But let 25 sit behind me. What, did that, what does that mean? And I had to be honest because I've heard the word hollow, but I couldn't with confidence say what hollow meant. And so I had to go look it up. Here's what I found, Sean. That hollow means an un field space an unfilled space Holy Spirit so okay Holy Spirit an unfilled space and he said okay he gave me a little biology lesson he said touch your thigh do that with me touch, touch. where is the unfilled space there isn't one in the natural 
everything is fitly joined together. It's compact. In fact, it's kind of cluttered. Ain't no space there. That's like, okay, Lord, wait, wait, hold up now. I might need to pull over on 85 to get this one. What are you trying to tell me? And he took me back. He said, remember when you talked to people about the fight he was in? He said, and you told them, he, you know, I know people like to say he fought God, but no man can fight God and win. Because the Bible said that he didn't prevail. God would win. Every single, God has won. No man can fight an angel and win. So he found out he was really fighting himself. The word, ish, the word man is the word ish, which means champion, which means he was in battle with his better self. Just like you. Right now, your old man is doing battle with your new man. Your old ways are doing battle with your righteous ways. And you are fighting within yourself and taking it out on us. <laughs> yeah, you heard that last part. Yeah. And so I'm in this battle with myself. And Jacob was in a battle with himself. Jacob was in a battle with his better self. And his better self was losing. It's something else where you can be so honest with yourself. To know that you're being presented with the better version of you. And the better version of you ain't winning. Can anybody be that honest? I know you went. Remember when I, we at church. This is the place that the broken folk come to be healed. You can't be healed if you're lying. Because when you act like you're healed, folk put weight on you. And you don't want to put weight on a break too soon. If the bone ain't healed, put weight on it if you want to. That bad boy snap. And what was just a fracture now becomes a compound fracture. Don't pretend you're ready if you ain't ready. Mm. And so, in the midst of him fighting himself, his world deep was too cluttered. The voices were too compound on him. And so he reached a space and a place in time that I hope you are in. Well, he said, if there ain't space for it, I think I need to make it. Mm. Ain't no space naturally here. So in order for there to be space for God to step into his walk. Y'all acting slow today. Jacob had to do it himself. Because before that moment, wasn't no room for God. Before he got to the place where he can, watch this now, where he was no longer fighting everybody else. Because before you get to you, you fight every else. Before you deal with you, it's everybody else's fault. Before you deal with you, I got all these other folk to blame. But at the end of the day, the heavy round match is between me and me. And the sad part about it is that the old me been training longer than the new me. And so I got the new me up on the ropes. But it's funny, I see my new self losing, but I want him to win. So I injure myself. I make room where there's normally no room for God. Look at somebody and say, you need to make room? Do you need to? Do you? Do you? Do you need to make room? You crying. You've been crying. You're going through. Is there room? Is there room? Because you mad at everybody but you. Maybe you need to make some room so God can step into your walk. And so when Jacob came out, there was a visible difference. 
And see, see, the thing is, when change really happens, it ain't change that we have to guess at. <laughs> it, ain't, it, it ain't change where you're like, well, if you knew me better, you know. No, 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 no. Uh-uh. When you've really taken yourself through a process. See, you ought to be tired of circumstances trying to force you through process. Maturity says, I will take myself. You ain't got to sit nothing else. You ain't got to have near another storm. Ain't got to have near another heartbreak. I'm going to take myself. You ain't got to set up nothing else, God. Ain't nobody else got to come after me. The enemy ain't even got to mention me. I'm going to deal with myself. I don't need nobody. You ain't got to send nobody over here. I got me this time. And I promise you, the better me going to win, even if I have to hurt myself to get the... Mm. And so, sometimes you got to come out with a... with a limp. Mm. That every step reminds you. <laughs> Of this battle that I'm in. Not with you. With me. Because we wrestle not against what, mama? Flesh and blood. My battles are with my what? Principalities. Where are they? In me. So the fight has always been, you just see the results of my fight. And so I say, God, I thank you for my limp. <laughs> Look at your neighbor real quick. Say, you got a limp? Because guess what? I'm learning not to trust people who don't have a limp. If, if you walk straight up and everything good and you blessed and highly favored all the time and you got wings in the back of your... No. I need somebody who found some space in their life that was too cluttered and they had to do something to themselves to make room for God. I'm attracted to broken people. Because the only reason why it's broken is to make a little space. And so I said, God, does let mean something to me. He said, let me tell you what it means to me. And this is what he told me the acronym means. Put that up now. Life's interruptions that I wasn't prepared for, that caused me to make mistakes. And every time I made mistakes, I caused pain. But if it wasn't for life's interruptions that were bigger than me, because when life didn't become bigger than me, I was my own God. You too. You ain't come till him till you couldn't handle your life. And sometimes when he puts your life back in order, you say you don't need him no more anyway. And so guess what he does? He sends you another interruption. Just so you can make a mistake. And now I'm producing a whole bunch of... But until I got the limp, I wouldn't make a hollow for him. I didn't make space for him. An unfilled space. Take everything else out. I've been telling God I needed him to be a roommate. He says, I need a dwelling place of my own. I don't want to live with your stuff. I need space. He said, all of this glory needs its own space. I can't share time and space with something else. I'm God. There's, I'm unsearchable. I need my own talk to us, God. I've come to understand that my limp is saving me. Hmm. Hmm. Oh, you got to get that. I hear you, Lord. My limp. Wow. Watch this, is exposing me while saving me. <laughs> Y'all can see that I'm hurt. 
<laughs> can't dress it up no more with a shata e table, so can't do that. God wants to make room. The wound can't be hidden no more. And so I got to still seek my healing. Why are you talking about me? Uh-uh. Because he's healing me from you, first of all. And I didn't even know I needed to be healed from you. Mercy. Life's interruptions. It was going smooth. Had a little momentum, Beverly. It was cool. I thought me and Jesus were like this. Call him Jesus no more. Call him Broham. Bruh, what's up? We down like four flats. Then life hit me. And I went to reach for something. And I didn't have nothing in me to tell me how to respond to it. But I had to respond. And so if I can't reach in, I have a tendency to reach back. And every time I reach back, I give the old man new life. Because ain't nobody back there but the... And every time when I reach for him, he don't know what to do up here. So he started advising me from back there. I'm all the way up here. He advising me from back there, leading me to make... I have no choice but to make a mistake. <sighs> and then pain. But that pain made me make room for God. So this interruption showed up in times of my ignorance, and we didn't know how to respond, and I've taught you that your life looks just like what? How you respond. The life is the life you built. And so I saw this about Jacob, and I'm really starting to appreciate Jacob before he becomes Israel. He gave us Jacob just so we can see ourselves. Watch this. I don't want to put all these scriptures up there. I'm going to make you go study yourself. But if you go back to Genesis, the 27th chapter, it begins to tell about one of Jacob's interruptions. It tells us about Jacob's father, Isaac. And in that chapter you learn that Isaac is more fond of the other twin. Isaac loves Esau. Here comes an interruption. Have you ever found yourself in a place where you just want your people to love you? Oh, y'all don't want to be honest. I know, I didn't even warm you up. I went right for the juggler. I just want my family to love me. Why am I the black sheep of the family? Why? Why you seem to care more for them than me? Why can't I get some attention? Where my daddy at? Why you got time for them? other babies you made, but you ain't come by, see? Where are my people at? Because that's the first place of our wounding. It's in the place where the highest expectations are. I expect, I, I can understand when other people trip. But how are we going to have the same last name? How are we going to have the same grandma, the same mama, daddy? How are we going to have Papa's picture in everybody's house and you don't care nothing about? Oh, Jacob won't it. I just want my daddy to like me too. Oh, let's be real. Some of us, 30, 40, 50, 60 years old, still doing stupid stuff because I just want somebody in my own house. 
to like me? Have you gone around whispering to yourself all your life, what's wrong? Ain't nothing, that there's, there's no greater setup question to get you in bad situations if you find yourself often saying to yourself, what's wrong with me? Because when I do that, I'm constantly looking for outside affirmation, somebody to tell me I'm okay because the ones who should have told me ain't got nothing left for me. when I don't get what I should have got, I make mistakes. Have you noticed life makes demands of you whether you got what you needed or not? Life act like you got it when you should have got it. And so you're going to get a pop test whether they gave you the textbook or not. Because by now, you should have had the information. By now, you should have had the infilling. And so I'm going to make a demand of you. And when you ask of what I don't have, I'm reaching back. And he don't advise me well. Jacob, that's what his dad is affection. And so he did what he should have naturally done. He went to his mama for advice. Because if anybody should know how to be close to daddy. Oh, don't get quiet now. It ought to be mama. If anybody should know how to win my daddy's affection, my daddy's heart, it ought to be my mom. But instead of teaching him how to win his heart, she taught him how to trick him. It's in the book. Go back and read it. I ain't going to go through all the scriptures in there. Rebecca taught Jacob her methods. Yeah, let that hit you. I want his heart. She taught him how to get his stuff. The name Rebecca means the ensnarer. In other words, the trap setter. The original trap house. So, watch this. Able to use your spiritual imagination, she taught him how to trick. So maybe that's why daddy was really mad when he named me Trickster. <laughs> maybe what he calls me ain't got nothing to do with me. Maybe he's taking his feelings out about her on me. Here I am supposed to be being equipped for life, but I'm caught in the middle of y'all's fight. And because you didn't get it, I don't get it. Or you got something you shouldn't have got, now you're giving me that. Set me up to make more. So at the end of the day, Jacob caused pain between him and his brother. Because he tricked the daddy out of the birthrights. Meaning, watch this, he tricked the daddy out of some stuff. Here's the sad part about it. He got the daddy's stuff, but still didn't get the affection. Still not getting what I need. How many of you have been trading stuff for intimacy?
Because it's possible. Let me, let me tell you ladies a little something about us. Y'all want to know something about us? You can get our stuff without getting our heart. I really want to go further. Y'all, somebody tell me step out the boat. Somebody. And so even with you walking around looking like you have all of our stuff, somebody could take us because they came for the heart. See, church lessons that we don't talk about. Because at the end of the day, what I want more than Michael Kors, Buy me the bag, but make sure it's an extension of your. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because if we can only afford the knockoff and I can keep your, we good. But if I got to have all the expensive stuff and you keep your heart, all it's going to do is set us up like nice looking people making mistakes. And causing a whole bunch of, oh, I like what they drive in, but they driving somewhere to make a, and to call somebody. Oh, you see how big that house is, but that house in every room is full of what? People making, and every room full of what? Are y'all listening to me? She taught him how to trick him, and some families don't know intimacy. All they know is get over. I ain't talking about individual. I'm talking about families, some families. Some families, that's all they know. That's all they know. It's the survival of the fittest. You hate to even go around them because you know you got to outshine them. You somewhere mad at your child because you're trying to keep her hair perfect. Can't scuff your shoes up because we're going over so-and-so house. We got to look like we got it together. Can't even enjoy yourself because everybody got to look like they're on the back of a church fan. You get back in the car and you keep in score. Did we win this time? I know I'm telling the truth, but we're going to get healed. With that reality, which is most of our reality, that kind of pain, all it did, although it looked like it was going to break you, all it did was cause you to make space. Because clearly I can't get it from them. Mm. So I guess I got to make room for you. Because even though they won't give it to me, I can't act like I don't need it. Even when I learn they don't have it to give, it don't make my need go away. Watch Jacob prove it. If we jump over two more chapters to Genesis 29, Jacob done did his dirt at the house, now he's moving away looking to find love. <laughs> and Jacob, the Bible says, Jacob, go back and read it. Jacob meets this pretty young thing named Rachel. And the Bible says it was love at first sight. Believe it or not. And as hard as we might act like we are, all we ever really want is for somebody to love us. Have you ever been at somebody's bedside when they're dying? Anybody? Anybody worried about their stuff? For real, they're not. I've had a couple of occasions where I, this, it blew my mind, and it, it looked like it was Bible, how the Bible says that, 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 um, that, that Jacob later wouldn't die until he had a chance to bless his sons. I watched somebody, I watched a mother hold back death. It was amazing. I watched her hold back death until her child got there. 
She was in the final throes of a cancerous death and barely breathing, sounding like she was underwater, but she wouldn't let go. And her son was in the hallway and he wouldn't come in. And I had to go get it because he was young. He was young. He was like 13 years old. And I could understand him not wanting to see his mama like that. And I had to go get him. I had to talk him through. I said, listen, you got to come. I said, I'm going to be with you. But you got to come. Oh, God, it makes my eyes water just to remember that. And I watched God give him strength. And, oh, my God. He walks in and he takes the rail down. Climbs up in the bed with her. Lays right beside her face to face while she's struggling to breathe. And he says, Mama, I'll be okay. You can go. And I watched one tear roll out of Miss Rosetta's eye. And she said, because I just needed what I love near me. Because none of this other stuff matters. There's somebody, if there's not somebody who's willing to cradle my heart. And so he found this pretty girl out there by the well doing, doing what she would normally do. And he fell madly in love with her. She was beautiful. And see, he hadn't learned how to love at a depth, so all he loved was what she looked like. <laughs> Family didn't teach him how to love deep. So he just loved what he saw. Some of y'all got that same problem. You'd rather see his resume than his heart. You'd rather pull his credit than know his heart. If I look at your list, it ain't got nothing about the depth of the man or the depth of the woman because they taught you how to love stuff and not intimacy. And the older we get sometimes, the more we think we are worthy. It's about time for me to get my. I'm going to drink some water because y'all don't want to say amen. That's all right. I told y'all sometimes I got to preach and make you mad. Y'all know I'm built for this. And so he found this pretty girl and life's interruption comes up. and Watch this. Since he couldn't get his daddy's affection. And since he lost his brothers. Because they was cool until that moment. He still had a need. And watch this. When you're real hungry, Dan, you don't do thorough investigation. After a while, you start looking for availability. You, you. Are you married? <laughs> is, is your blood clean? Where you were? You still with your mama? How many babies you got? How many baby mamas? Easy test to pass. Because even if they say no, don't you got a contingency, contingency plan for all of those two anyway. Because when you're so hungry, you don't investigate. And so he makes another mistake. Because this girl was part of his mama's family. And had he just spent some time to investigate them, he would have saw that it wasn't just Rebecca who was an ensnarer. It was a family tradition. We all get over. And whoever knows how to do it best is the one who gets the most. And so Rachel's daddy could see the gullibleness of the boy, and he tricked him. Now I'm starting to understand the daddy better. <laughs> Maybe Rebecca was just fine. But he didn't realize what all he was getting into. Question. Have you ever gotten intimately involved with someone and you didn't know what all and who all came with them? I just wanted you. I don't want all y'all. I thought it was just me and you. Now I'm taking care of everybody. I thought they were staying for the weekend. That was September. 
It's March now. Had I just spent time with your family, I might have known how you really act. Because the apple don't fall. Unless with intentionality you change. But I thought everything was great. I didn't know that's how they trained you. Show them the presentable parts first. Then once you ensnare him, once your hooks are in her, you don't even have to explain yourself. She'll explain yourself to herself. Y'all, I know, I know I'm telling the truth. Y'all don't have to say amen. She can see you being a fool. And she'll explain you to herself. He'll see the other personalities. And he'll find a way to blame. I must have. I must have did something I'm, because I'm already hooked. And it's hard to back out when you're hooked. Because now I got to deal with the embarrassment because I don't took you around to everybody. And I, done, I done professed all my love and I done told everybody you're the best thing since sliced bread. I done, told, I done got to, everybody, you know, because you know my family, we competing. So I got the best chick on the block. And now. I done messed around and made a mistake. Mm. So, 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 I get Jacob. I get him. You do too. Because you showed up when I was hungry. And I had a need I still needed to fill. But instead of being bitter and upset with you, thank you. Because without that pain, I would have kept being my own God. You made me put a hollow in my walk. <laughs> I get it now. Our Father, which art in heaven, hollow it. I have to make room for your name. I got to put your nature in my life. Because if I don't, my life will be cluttered without. My life looks full. I have to remove stuff to get God in. You ain't walking around empty. You full. Full of something. But pain will make me start throwing stuff out. That got to go. It got to go. You got to go. I got to make room. Let me hurry up. I'm, I'm preaching too long. But ain't nothing like a good old broken heart. Ain't nothing like a good old broken heart. A broken heart so God can find a space to get in. You want, you, you want me now? He loves the broken and contrite heart. Contrite, watch this now, because most of us say that we don't know what it means. Contrite means I broke it myself. My decisions. And so after I got, you know, what we normally do, D, what we normally do, get us some, get some barbed wire and some scotch tape. We try to fix it ourselves. Present ourselves as whole people. <laughs> then we go mess up somebody else's life. When God says, listen, I don't even want to fix it. I want to give you a new one. I don't want any remnants of the past. I don't want you to have nothing to reach back for. Uh, talk, Holy Ghost. 
And so we finally get back to our text. Let me hurry up so y'all lose patience with me. 27, chapter 29, now we're over 32. And Jacob is now preparing to meet back up with his brother, the one he betrayed. See, I can get you standing up on your feet when I talk about the people that hurt you. Don't nobody want to run to the basket when I talk about the people you hurt. Mm. If, 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 if you're able to take my message and twist it through your pain to make it seem like I'm endorsing your situation. You don't hear it for what it is. You hear it for what you want it to be. And you're grabbing it up. You're grabbing it up like stones so you can throw them at somebody. <laughs> your best bet is to take all of them and throw them up in the air and just walk right up on them. Walk right up under. Because Jacob reaches a point where he needs reconciliation because he needs peace. Reconciliation does not mean recapturing of the old. It means healing enough to move on. Oh, don't miss that. It does not mean it's always going to go back to how it was. It means we heal enough together so we both can move on, even if we both. Huh. As a matter of fact, if we reconcile right, we both walk away like. Because even in our reconciliation, I realize I better make space for God. And so Jacob knows that Esau was coming. Hmm. He came to the place where he realized he needed to make things right. But to make things right, get this. Here it is. And this is the last thing you got to get. You got to get this. I got to get this. To make things right, you have to become someone different. You're so busy being mad at somebody else, you're wasting time to become. Because you are complicit in the situation. Even if you can point to the fact that the other person did more damage to the relationship, you're complicit because you chose it. And that means you must be broken somewhere, too. And so Jacob, while wrestling with himself, <laughs> he goes, listen, because if you don't become someone different, this is what, no, this is what happens. You will pull up old ways. Listen, let me say, li listen, I need you to hear this. Hear this. Don't, 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 don't amen me on this one. Just be quiet on this one. Just listen. 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 If you don't become somebody different, you will just pull up your old ways when you are confronted by your past. The past that you didn't handle right. The past where you were wrong. You will go back to cussing. You will go back to blaming. You will go back to making excuses and creating more pain. Y'all hear me? If you want reconciliation, if you want healing, you got to do what Jacob did. You got to let God change your name. And I'm not talking literally. I'm talking figuratively. Figuratively, the changing of the name means to change your nature. I need to go from getting ahead by getting over to being Israel who's concerned about the commonwealth, the prince, the future king. I'm learning how to make decisions, not about I, but about us. 
That's what's funny about us. We want, to, we want relationships, but you make more decisions about I than we. You make more decisions about you than us. And it's a growing phenomenon because they're pushing this thing, and they're perverting, they're really perverting the things of God. They're, they're pushing this thing called self-love too far. And it's acceptable to us because we know the scripture says, love your neighbor as you. But the self-love thing is trying to make you become the center of your universe. When in reality, everything in you begs for attachment. Doesn't it? I don't care how bad you've been treated, how mad you are at folks, you still long for attachment. The worst thing they do to prisoners is put them in... And see, while we're on the outside, we be thinking like, you know, if I'm in jail, put me in solitary confinement. I don't want to be with everybody else. You just don't know how important human contact is. Even if you got to put me out on the yard where I got to risk my life, I need somebody in my presence, just somebody to bump up against you next time, just to, just to know that I'm still here. But if you put me in there all by myself, it's not good for me to be alone. I will drive me crazy. I ain't as good as I like to think I am. If I want to spend, spend 30 days alone with you. Right? I know you think gold dust falls out your butt, but you ain't that. And I normally, when I'm counseling folk, I check where they really are with that, and I say, listen, would you marry you? And the lies go, yeah, 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 yeah. Hmm. Yeah. If I was the last one left. <laughs> but it's relationships, Travis, that bring us bring us out. <sighs> I'm grateful for my limp. You can play Trav. I'm going to stop talking. I'm, I'm learning and I'm, and I'm hoping you'll learn with me. Everything don't need to be hidden. Some injuries have to be exposed to the air for healing. And I'm learning that had it not been for the pain, even the pain, watch, listen to this, even the pain you can assign to someone else as being the cause of it. God doesn't waste it. And if, but we waste it if we're too busy pointing fingers, casting stones, all this stuff. Oh, I need to sit somewhere and say, Teach me my part in this. Because the only thing, only person I'm equipped to fix as much as love makes you sometimes want to climb in somebody's chest and work it all out for them, then step back out and say, Now love me. Can't do it. All you can hope to do is inspire them to follow your lead. Put the takeaway up there for me, Gina. Thank y'all for letting me get all that out. I know I'm preaching longer these days, and I, I don't want to test your patience. But like I told you, I just feel like I got so much to give you. Life's interruptions that lead to mistakes, that cause pain. Will cause you, listen to this, y'all, to either build walls or cause you to make space a hollow for God to become a part of your walk through life. Look at that right there. You're either building walls or you're making space. Whichever thing you're doing, 
you're doing it. You're doing it with your own hands. That does not mean your pain isn't real. That does not mean that that didn't happen to you. It does not mean that you didn't go through this. It doesn't mean that your family went this, that, or the other. All that is true. But what's being constructed now, who's building it? You. You. Make room for God. Because that last one really stung when I heard it. The choice is yours. And so are the consequences. Ain't nobody got to go through the consequences with you. Sometimes folk love you enough to walk through with you, but they ain't got to. Ultimately, they're yours. Yours. So if they're mine, I might want to handle my life a little better. I might need to make space for God. Where does he need to be in your life? Don't say it out loud. Just say it within your prayer life right now. Where do you, where are you so cluttered that you need to make space? And it might hurt you. It might feel like dislocating a joint. All that is is something I'm used to being attached to. Something I'm used to being attached to. Something I'm used to being attached to. Something I came to depend on. Something I'm used to being attached to. I might need to put some space because if I've gotten so attached, I might have made it a God. Unaware, I might have made it. I might be practicing idolatry. Let me stop. Come on, stand. Look at somebody say, I'm grateful for this limb. I'm grateful. You wouldn't have become as big as you are right now to me, God, if it had not been for this limb. I wouldn't worship like I worship had it not been for this pain. I would have not dove so deeply in your word had I not run out of answers. My desperation is what's led to my elevation. I need you. Bow your heads. God, I love you. God, I love you. And I love this life you've orchestrated for me. I'm grateful for this life you have orchestrated for me. The good, the bad, the ugly, the indifferent, all of it is a needed ingredient in the making of wonder. Thank you. Before we leave, we want to cast the lifeline one more time. This is your life preserver to get the help that you need. You don't have to come down front. don't have to make a speech. Your neighbor's eyes are closed. Nobody's watching you. You ain't got to worry about somebody staring at you. This is between you and you. Your present self and your better self. Give your better self a fighting chance by accepting Jesus Christ as your Savior. I see your hand, daughter. Thank you. Hallelujah. Is there another? We don't want you to be left out. You're not holding us up. This moment was carved out in time just for you. This is the day heaven chose to celebrate your soul's arrival. Don't miss your own appointment. Put that hand up for me real quick so I can know where you are. Is there another? Come on, let's pray with this sister. Y'all repeat after me. Say, Father, I thank you for Jesus Christ. I confess with my mouth that Jesus is Lord. And I believe in my heart that God raised him from the dead. And because of my confession... And because of this newfound faith, the Bible tells me that I'm saved. That means from this moment to all of eternity, I'm yours. 
you can't get rid of me and I can't get rid of you. So since we got to be together, Lord, fix me. Lord, heal me. Lord, deliver me. Then put me to work. In Jesus' name. Come on, let's celebrate that soul. Come on, grab hands with the person beside you before we leave. Stretch across the aisles. Hallelujah. Do me a favor. Listen to me, listen to me, listen to me, listen to me. This is important. Hold that hand like they need you. Hold that hand like if you lost your grip, they might not recover. I got you. I got you. I got you. But what strength I have, I'll tap into it for you. Father, thank you that we did not forsake our assembling today. Thank you that you gave us the message that we needed today. The right now word for us today. I feel my healing taking place right now. I feel my strength being restored right now and not only that i feel the strength of my neighbor i feel the healing of my neighbor god you are healing the body it's not enough for me to be whole but i need my sister i need my brother i need them to be whole i need them to know you in your fullness i need to know them in their fullness we need to walk in righteousness god thank you for being the healer Now confront us with what needs to be changed in us, in me, in me. Somebody say in me, in me. In Jesus' name, I love y'all. Amen.